Hello, everybody. So uh, it's Mr. Tonkin for the media taster session. Now, some of you may be doing film as well. I know there's a few doing both courses. Um, so I may refer back to that. Uh, don't worry if you're not, but just so you know that there are two separate courses. Some people have been a little bit confused. We have the A level in film, and this one is the B tech in creative media, and you can take both should you wish. So, first thing, is to make it clear to you what, what it is, because there's so many different versions of these sorts of things that have existed. And I'll give you a little bit of context as well. Um, so it's called the National Extended Certificate in Creative Digital Media Production, and it is the equivalent of one A-level, okay? We as a school, we have always offered A-level film and then BTEC in media. Um, um, what happened was, uh, probably three years ago now, um, they made huge changes to all courses, level three and level two or GCSE. So you're probably aware of this because you would have gone through the new versions of the GCSEs. And when they made that huge shift, certain things were faster than others to go through and be clarified that, that they're okay to be delivered. So this one was maybe a bit behind. So we haven't done it now. Uh, this is the first time around with this version of the course, but we used to do the old version. It's probably one of the most successful courses that we've had, the school have had, to be honest. Um, it's gone very, very well in the past. I used to love teaching it, and I know the kids love doing it um, because it maybe has a bit more of a hands on feel, you know, a little bit more practical. But this is a new course, and with it comes new challenges. It's new units. It's not the same way we've worked, so we're going to have to adapt, and we are still getting those things sorted as we speak, okay? So not everything is that i will present today will give you absolute clarity on who's teaching you what because we're still having to navigate all this because there's a very complicated process behind the scenes which i won't bore you with but i will go through the major elements you need to know so why media here's some general reasons why people like taking media it'll be similar to film studies perhaps but most people maybe have a more eye on, a, on working in the industry and that may be something that some of you are thinking about potentially um, lots of people like that balance between coursework, and so they think BTEC offers that because you do more project-based work. And I must say that that reflects industry. It reflects most industries, actually. I, I think of all the people I know uh, who are in different worlds of work, and, and most of it's project-based. You know, you have a window of time to get something delivered. And so that very much is the case in the broad media industries. Um, so you get a nice balance. So not all weighted on examinations. Um, you get to be creative, and this is nice because there's obviously opportunities within it to express your creativity, and people want that opportunity. But equally, there's a sort of more technical, practical element. So even if you're not potentially as creative as others, you may have the abilities to pick up technical and practical skills, which can really help you on this course. So there we go. There's a broad uh, idea as to why you might be taking this course. This one uh, is Pearson, that's the exam board, and you have two exam units and two coursework units, so all in all, four units all together. I just want to take you through what the units are and give you a little bit of background information on them. So these two here are your examination units. Quite a bit of information on here, I'll just walk you through it. So media representations, that will be an on-screen exam. So that means it's on a particular um, online service and you'll f you'll fill in all your your exam on there in two hours and obviously you can see it's worth 80 marks and then you get this unit eight responding to a commission it's a little bit different so you get a little window in order to do this so you see it says six hours under supervised conditions so we will schedule that all in for you okay and what you will get before that is a sort of brief that you're going to work to so you know what the exam's broadly about because you'll have this brief and then you'll be spending that time so it's a little bit it's an exam but it's a little bit like a project over an extended amount of time um but just condensed into a little window so you'll probably be in a room for three sets of two hours it's along those lines okay so it's something new for us it didn't used to happen on the old course um but it's become very typical with btex and some of you may be used to this already because some of the level two btex that you may have done in your gcc years I've had a similar sort of idea. So media representation is the first one. That's unpicking and analyzing um, the way in which 
people in the world and places or whatever it may be are represented through lots of different types of media. Responding to a commission, should have probably said this, that refers to you as a producer of whatever media product it is. Let's just say it's in video games. Um, you responding to a commission is because you've been commissioned to do a piece of work. Now provide us with all your plans. What's it going to look like? How are you going to make sure that the audience are are um, satisfied? And what your technical process is? There's lots and lots of details in that. We'll go through and we'll teach you, and then you'll get your brief and then you'll you'll hit that exam window. So they're the exam parts, and then we get the coursework elements. As you can see, pre-production portfolio and film production. Now. Unit four, pre-production portfolio, that's, that's not a choice for us, um, as in the exam board, make it explicitly, you must do that. Um, but unit 10 is the one we've chosen. There are a few others you could do, but we have to work within the remit of what our students would want to do. That's the first thing. Um, we can't do more than one of those units. We have to choose. And we believe it's the right choice because of our expertise and because we know the the sort of makeup of the students and you essentially there even though it says film film and you know there is a, a level in film if you're taking film of course it's a crossover that's useful that will be useful absolutely but it's not essential there's no reason why a film study student will necessarily do any better at this than a media student who's never done it before some of you watching this would have done film maybe and um at gcc but some of you wouldn't have and we are very used to that so please don't don't be too concerned um, with regards to these two units, we will sort of find a way of linking them. So your pre-production portfolio, that is about preparing a production. So you've got to go through all the sort of processes, how you get something ready to the stage where it's going to be, say, filmed in this example. Um, so lots of planning and lots of logistics and lots of creative decisions that you have to make. And then obviously with film production, that will have its own element of, of planning, but we'll probably use unit four to plan for unit 10. So it comes together and it will hopefully be something that you can be very proud of. So you have lots of time to spend on, on developing whatever this project may be. And to give you a little bit of context for that, we are in the midst of pulling this all together. Like I say, I'm not going to be able to share all of our plans today because we're still working on it as we speak. But we have quite an exciting idea, which is working with an ex-student um, who you may have heard of, you may have he came in, but he did a talk for the sixth formers, and you guys weren't there, unfortunately. You weren't allowed to be, but you will see him at some point. Um, he'd only left un um, university a couple of years ago, but he's managed to get himself his own business. It's very, very exciting what he does. He works with all sorts of people from the sporting world to the music world, and he is also um, you know, very proud of his roots with us. So he has already said he's very willing to offer work experience, He's also going to be the client for us on this brief. So he will be your, your work will be sent to him and he will be judging it. And that is a great opportunity for you to start just to get your feels for the industry. If you can get yourself recognized by someone um, and he has work. In fact, he's got paid work for one of our current six formers who when he came in, I showed him his work. He was so impressed. He said, well, I need some extra editors. Um, so he's been in contact and he's editing some work for him um and that is um like football show reels it's Jaden sancho is one of his clients so he has to make him his social media content that goes up on instagram and the likes it's his company that edits it together for him so one of our six formers is editing that and that's going to be seen by millions so you can see it's quite exciting the opportunities here so i won't go through the details of it because we're still ironing that out but that's where we're going to sort of fit this, this course in and make it as closely linked to industry as we possibly can. All right, moving on. The grading. Now, might be if you haven't done BTEX, this may look a bit complicated. Let me just work my way through it. Firstly, overall, these top four ones, that's what you're going to get at the end of this course. You'll either have a pass, a merit, a distinction, or a distinction star. I've put underneath what the associated grade would be at A level. Obviously, with that comes lots of like UCAS points when you're thinking about potentially going to university, but that's for another day. Um, in the exams, when they mark these, when they mark your grades, they'll have certain points will equal certain grades, right? So I don't know, that's for argument's sake. So you hit 40% of the marks, that might be a pass grade. But what they recognized was that people not hitting that pass grade um, were then pretty much not getting a grade at all in the whole qualification. And that was a mistake of the exam board. So what they introduced was this near pass. So if you do an exam unit, uh, 
obviously you want to get more than this, but there is a little bit of a buffer underneath, a near pass, which just allows you to continue on the course because anyone failing and getting an, a U, a fail, that that essentially means you won't be able to pass the course at all. So hopefully that, that doesn't happen here, of course. I should also say that a distinction style, although you can come out of that in the end, every time you submit a piece of work to us, you're even going to get, or you might get a fail, like I say, you get a pass of merit or distinction. Near pass does not exist for us in the coursework elements. It's just for exams. So we'll be putting pass merit distinction down. Distinction star isn't a different grade as such. It's an accumulation. So it's only when you have a certain amount of distinctions throughout the course can you get a distinction star. I hope that gives a bit of clarity just because I know that's the one of the things that students get a bit confused by with the BTEC. So I hope that does give you a bit of context. But also, don't worry too much about it right now because it will all make sense in time. Um, to give you a bit more detail on how it make how you make it up in the course this is how it works there's like a little put points threshold so you get points per unit per grade and then you total it up and then here are your sort of total so as you can see to get a merit for example you need 52 points again i'm not going to go through the specifics of the points you need to get and show you all that right now because i think that would probably be a bit overwhelming but i did want to give you the sort of broad sort of process behind it so that you understood the course in, in the, on this level. So you add up at the end to see what points you're on. And the great news of this is that when you're on the course, you know, certain points in the year, we'll be able to give you feedback on your assignments. And when you get that feedback and your points, you can sort of start toppling it up. You'll start to realize what you need and what you don't need. So oh, to get distinction overall now, I know what I need to do. I need to get a certain grade now in my next unit. Or in that exam, this is what I need to get. And you'll be able to work on things in that way. And it's quite nice. I think for a lot of students, it feels like you're a bit more in control of your your result uh, as opposed to sort of all being left to the last day on that exam. So that will be quite nice. But it's also very important you understand the handing in firstly and submitting your work. Now, normally all schools are going to tell you, every teacher is going to tell you, hand in your homework. Of course we would. But there is an added importance with the BTEC. So on this next slide, you can see that this is a, an example of a student on the course who, as you can see, got a merit, they got a distinction and they got another merit. So three out of four, they got merits. However, they failed to either submit or completely got it wrong somehow on, um, on unit four. Therefore, they got a U grade, a fail, if you like, and got zero points. It doesn't matter that the point adds up to 57, which would be enough for, say, a merit. It doesn't matter because if you get a, a U and unclassified, then you don't meet the requirements to pass the course. So I wanted to bring this to your attention so you're all fully aware of how this works. So let's play it in, in um, scenario that you're in class and you're bringing in uh, your work. First thing is you get a brief. We give you a deadline date. You submit your work on the due date. That's simple. The assessor, that's us. We will then feed back to you and allow you a resubmission so you can hand that back into us. Um, you have 10 days to produce that resubmission. And if you fail to meet the initial deadline, we'll still give you 10 days. You failed the first one, but you've got 10 days, but then you'll be limited to only achieving a pass. So meeting the first deadline is vital. Keeping within the window of opportunity, the 10 days to reproduce is vital because otherwise you're really going to limit yourself. So I know it sounds like I've gone all official on the sort of details of the course, but um, I do think it's important. And if we were stood in front of you right now in a classroom, I would be going over this to make sure you're fully aware. Um, that BTEX, despite what you might think, some people have a, the wrong impression of it. Um, yes, it's perhaps better for people that there's more coursework emphasis, but that coursework emphasis is probably more stringent, stricter than coursework on your normal A levels or your normal GCSEs that you may have done. So we've got to make sure we keep to all the rules. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Okay. Um, now, with regards to the course, you'll you'll do on average about three assignments per unit in the coursework so you'd probably be for two units producing about six assignments to cover the whole of the criteria so that gives you an idea now of how that looks um it will all be linked it's not like they're all completely separate but just so you're aware it'll be slightly there'll be slightly different assignments within it so for example the production element the film that you produce that will be evidence of a certain part of the project one assignment but paperwork will be another part and it will be marked slightly separately 
and then accumulate to give you a grade overall for that unit. If in three assignments for one unit, you get distinction, distinction, and a pass, a pass is the highest you'll get for that unit. That's the points you'll carry through for the total score. So your lowest assignment grade will be the one that's most that, that is attached to your unit. So again, it's important that we get, if you'll get distinction, we'll get everything at distinction level within each unit. Okay. Preparations. When you come in September, you join us. Get yourself a folder. Again, anyone taking film will know about folders being very, very important. It's because at A level and B tech, all these sorts of courses, it's less con controlled by us. So although we may give you a, 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 a book for assessments, bits and pieces for us to mark internally, most of this is going to be you organize yourself. So get a folder, get dividers. So for this course, you were looking at there's obviously four units. So as long as you've got four to start with, that'd be fine. But then within that, you get lots of different like um, assignments. So you may want to have more just to help organize yourself because you have lots of things to consider. Um, exercise book, as I say, we will provide you with anything we need for that. Um, but then for, particularly for the BTEC, more so than the A-level, we will probably be using lots of the online platforms. Google Classroom is a good example. So if you have a tablet or a laptop, that absolutely could be useful. So please feel free to bring that. Um, and if you want to work in that way, we're happy to support that. So that's sort of like an overview, if you like, of the course. And very brief, I know. Um, I hope it's going to be quite fun and exciting when you actually look at what we'll be doing. Although there's lots of assignments, it's quite fun work. Most of it's going to be around your projects. It'll be around your ideas, and it'll be a chance for you to sort of express yourself. So. What we want to do for some summer work to prepare you for this course is get you creating your own Google Sites presentation that you can then share with us. So we want you to pick a particular text. I use that word carefully, media text, because if you see below, these are all the different types of industries and mediums that you can pick your text from. So it could be a film, it could be a TV show, it could be a famous advert. Could be a video game, could be a music video, could be a magazine. Okay. Now, a reason I've chosen these is because it relates to unit one. And so, the sort of topic I'm about to set you is sort of referring to what might come up in unit one exam. So, we thought it'd be quite useful to get you thinking about it already. Now, there's no requirement on you to have any technical understanding. I don't necessarily need you to have lots of. Um, brilliant language, you know, from a media perspective, because you haven't been taught yet. Uh, this is just your ideas. This is you as a person, not necessarily as a media student. So don't worry too much. But here we go. This is what the title of the project is going to be. So how does whatever it is you choose represent gender or ethnicity? So you get to pick your own. Let's say it is a particular TV show that seems to be you know what young people generally do now watch you know something on netflix so think of a show that you like how does that represent gender or ethnicity please don't do both just pick one and i've got your little sub questions for you to consider so what types of people are represented are these representations are they fair are they positive are they negative right because there's lots of ways you can represent different types of people how have the representations been formed what has a producer or director done to create this image so think about Again, there may be some technical language if you know it, but no expectation on that. You could just explain in your own words the way in which they created this particular male or female figure, let's say. Um, and how people responded to these representations. Are there differing responses? Has it changed over time? And you may want to do some research around it, but again, no requirements too. You could just use your own intuition and just tell us how you feel, and what you think people may, may respond to that particular show or advert or music video or whatever it may be. Now, I've tried to keep it broad. I tried to keep it a little bit open purposefully because I want people to sort of express themselves here. I don't want us to make it too rigid. So other than giving you gender or ethnicity, really it's completely up to you. You can pick anything. Um, and so I thought to myself, well, what can I do to help at this stage without making it too prescriptive? Well, what I've done is just put together a couple of slides that if I was in your position, what examples across all of those different mediums could I think of that I might like to look into and produce this sort of presentation on? So here we go. For gender, 
you're going to recognize a few of these, I'm sure. Things that I either enjoy watching or enjoy myself or something I think would at least be interesting to uncover. So I love Stranger Things. I think that'd be great for gender, particularly with Eleven's character. Um, but that's I always find it quite interesting uh, watching how these sort of young preteen boys and girls are sort of represented. Fleabag, um, you may be aware of, um, sort of quite topical BBC sort of sitcom, very good. But then adverts, I thought, and from my perspective, not in your world, I'm sure, but back in the 90s, there were these flake adverts for Cadbury's Flake, very sexualized, as you can see just for that one image. So I think maybe taking an old advert, that might be quite fun, um, pick it apart and think about how gender females represented. Um, not a game of myself, but I have played The Last of Us, which is utterly brilliant because it is just so cinematic. And again, um, just thinking back to the characters, and she perhaps does have some similarities with Eleven. Um, I forget her name, to be honest, but I'm sure someone listening to this knows it very well. That could be quite interesting. Fight Club as a film, I just went with that one because I used to teach it so much. Don't do it anymore, but used to teach it. And there's some great stuff in there about gender um, because it's all about this sort of hyper-masculine, uh, quite toxic masculine environment. Um, and there's some interesting female characters that come in as well. Magazines, not really my thing. I don't read magazines at all, actually, um, other than the film one here or there. But I just thought, what well, an obvious place to go would be like the body image sort of thing. So there's an example there. So you might want to pick one edition of a magazine from a shop or one you've already got lying around, by all means. Could be broader and say, I want to look at a particular type of magazine and look at it over the course of history and pick out different examples. I don't mind. You know, there's 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 no rules there. Do what you like with it. Um, I did pick FHM because that was a magazine when I was a teenager in the 90s. And there's this lad mag sort of culture in the 90s. And if you look at the, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but bachelor pads, turn your place into totty towers. And there's something on here about how to win arguments with women. So I think that would be quite interesting and quite fun. Not necessarily something I'm putting up as an example of positive gender representation quite the opposite but very interesting to pick sometimes be critical of something and try and understand what was happening at the time um the next one is that blurred lines music video with robin thick and uh pharrell williams and whoever the other guy was very controversial at the time um obviously now about four years old is it four or five years old um and the, the representation of females in that and the video was heavily censored to make it even watchable pre like 9 p.m so that might be quite interesting if you were to take something that's got the controversy element as many many music videos along those lines um equally though you could do something and i don't know what people are like here like whoever's in this particular class you may have tastes that go beyond sort of modern taste so there's boy george uh, from the 80s who is a prominent figure um for uh sort of progressive gender representation uh someone who has push boundaries and actually help shape what it's like for lots of people to define themselves and their own identity. So it might be worth you looking at someone, some group maybe from the past. Um, but that's, again, completely up to you. So there you go. There's a few ideas on gender. Nothing here. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to do any of these. You pick your own. But if you do wish to take any of these on, you think, oh, actually, yeah, I do love that or that looks interesting, um, then please do. There's, there's no rules. You can pick anything you like. If I was doing ethnicity, this is what I come up with. The Wire is probably my favourite TV show of all time, not something I imagine any of you have watched, uh, but looking at Baltimore and the sort of relationship between police and and the community, and there's lots of drug dealers and all sorts, and so you've got this um, African-American representation against the sort of more white, often Irish background of the police, so that's maybe quite interesting. Gone with Wind's been in the press recently because it's a classic film that's won Oscars, yet now been taken off of platforms because of its representation of uh, slave trade era and set on plantation and stuff. So maybe it could be worth picking something like that because then you can sort of get to understand it. Again, gaming, I mentioned earlier, I'm not really a game. I don't know much about it, but I just did a bit of research. So just so I had an example, by all accounts, Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, these two female figures of mixed heritage background um, uh, is quite progressive. So maybe that could be one you look at. Uh, Get Out, Jordan Peele's film. I'm hoping some of you have seen it. It's utterly brilliant. Uh, hard to explain, just a must watch. Um, so I'm not going to say anything about that. I'll leave you to watch it if you haven't already. Um, music videos, where you've got um, 
now. This is a Donald Glover. What's his name? Childish Gambino. That's his name. Um, that's the. This is America video, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. It caused absolute ripples across the world, really, when it came out, um, and now feels more poignant than ever, doesn't it? So that would be a great music video. The other side is Dave's Black, where he talks about black culture and what it's like to be black. So that could be quite interesting for for an ethnicity perspective. Magazines probably a bit harder actually, but um, there are some. There's some research out there, and there's particular prominent figures talking about. Uh, certain tropes and certain stereotypes, particularly of black women. And so, again, you could bring gender into it. But look, always up to you. Pick what you like, either gender or ethnicity. Produce us just a little presentation, not giving you a certain amount of words you have to do. It's not a piece of coursework. It's just like a passion thing, something you feel that you want to talk about. And just get your teeth into it. Let us know what you think. If you could, when you're done with it, I mean, obviously, we... We're all at home anyway, but we'll certainly be at home over the summer. So you can just share it with me and Miss Cross. Um, our email addresses and everything are on the website, so if you're not sure on them, but um, you can share them with us um, uh, so we can have a little look at it. Uh, at the very least, you can share it with us first day back in September when we see you. You can make sure it's ready for then, but uh, something to keep you busy. If you're looking for other things to do, but you already can see some of the content of the course, um, I don't expect you all to teach yourself certain things right I, I don't um and no miss cross doesn't either uh there is a film terminology thing on the film studies part with lots of summer terms if you're not taking film but you are taking media you're welcome to do that we've decided not to put it up as an expectation for the media students as well but as an option all you need to do to find that is just go on the film studies part and just get the word document which has a load of list of words now not every single word will be used in the media course but probably 85 percent of it would be so it's it's still worthwhile you doing as an extra little task other than that as ever you know be creative try things make things whatever it is you're interested in because i don't know what it is that people are taking film for whether it's sorry media for whether it's film or whether it's music videos if that's the world you want to go into or gaming or whatever it may be um, but there's all sorts of ways you can be creative develop ideas be technically creative and and produce something and we are always loving seeing stuff produced at home so there we go we look forward to seeing you in september any questions or anything please contact me or miss cross um there we go over and out i'll see you soon